presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's get a Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, what's going on? How are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing great, man. You having a good day out there? I am, thank you. Uh, I was willing to comment on the fact that I'm really enjoying the new format with you being there when the market's still open. You've uh, assembled a great group of people. They're all great technicians. And I'm just so glad that I first got you on the radio with your little tiger growl. I'm like, who is this guy? And it got my attention, and I it's really made a positive change in my life. You're awesome, man. Thank you so much. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night and a great week. And we get earnings coming out all week long, folks. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 7, NASDAQ up 1, S&P's flat. Gold contract up $6.50, trading at $1,234 an ounce. Silver up $0.16, cents, $16.10 an ounce. Platinum up five sixty at nine twenty seven an ounce. You get copper up 3.5 pennies at two seventy two a pound. Light sweet crew down $0.45, cents, trading $46.30 a barrel. Notes, 10-year note up three ticks, 125.24. 30 30-year bond up eight ticks, 152.27. King dollar down five ticks at 94.930. The euro is at 114 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is trading at 112.67 to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Wonder what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? It's pretty amazing, folks. So check it out. You know, summer trading, no doubt. Mondays, Fridays, slow day. This coming Friday, what we do have, though, is that option expiration, monthly option, ex ox option expiration. And I do expect that you're going to have some volume in this market. We're going to have earnings all week. We have Netflix uh, at 4.05, a couple others coming out. Uh, Netflix will be an interesting one to watch because, of, uh, of course, it's a high flyer. The SPY out here today, what has it done? Bottom line, you got to a price point out here of 245.91. Your high on Friday was 245.97, and you've done all of 18,000 shares. That's pretty amazing, folks. 18, 18 million, rather. Uh, you're talking about going over. On Friday, we went over the swing high of 130. That had 132 million. Friday, we end up doing 60 million. So you can see if we actually take a look at the. NYSE, I believe that what we're going to have here is that this is going to be probably the slowest market day, the lightest market volume day there is. Right now, we're at 372 million on the NYSE. We take a look at the NASDAQ composite, and the composite is 1.1. So the composite won't be the lightest. Uh, composite will probably come in about 1.5. S&Ps, though, big time. Let's go to the three Qs and take a look at the three Qs. What we have with the three Qs out here, three Qs trading right now at a price point of 142.14. We've done 19 million contracts. We, let's see, 142.69. So this is pretty cool. We made it over the swing high that was generated out here on the 26th. That's 142.29. We're under it right now, and, you know, we'll see if that's the failure. That is that that is a failure in price and volume. And the thing that's amazing, it's hard to believe that the queues won't even do $25 million. Now, the queues themselves are going into the ninth, and that is $109 million. So let's go right over to Netflix first. So Netflix, uh, no doubt, that's going to come out with numbers 405 this afternoon. Netflix had a high today of 163. It's trading 161.45. What Netflix has done 
is that you're going right into the downdraft that was created out there in the ninth. That's when Netflix went from 166 to 154 in a heartbeat. Uh, you're coming into that with an expansion of volume. So the way that this is set up, this is going to be pretty cool watching this. So we had a high today of 163.55. The high in Netflix is 166.87. And it has lighter volume than a downdraft. But when you are pushing into a swing point and you have an expansion of volume, which we have, because we did nine, we did 10.2 million on the downdraft. We're already at 9.3 million. This thing is gonna, this thing wants to tag its high. So this is gonna be interesting watching uh, good old Netflix at 405 when it does come out. Some of the higher volume, well, actually, let's go inside the Dow Industrials first and we'll see the strength versus the weakness. Uh, inside the Dow Industrials, the strength out here today, um, you have Home Depot putting nine positive points in, Boeing putting six, Apple putting four, Goldman putting four. Taken away from it, Big Blue. Big Blue is taken away 12, JP Morgan five, Johnson Johnson five, Merck three. We go inside the NDX 100. We take a look at the NDX 100. Strength versus the weakness out here today. Strength inside the NDX 100 is JB Hunt. That's a trucking firm. That's up 2.3%. Akamai is up 2.3%. Uh, tractor Supply is up 1.7%. And Norwegian Cruise Line is up 1.6%. Taken away from it, Biomolin is down 4.5%. You get Ultrasalon down 2.8%. Tesla is off 2.5%. And INCY is off 2.5%. Uh, we go take a look at the... IBB, so the IBB, that had broken out a couple weeks ago, still hanging up at its highs. It's going to be intriguing here watching this, though, because what the IBB did do today, it got over the swing high of last Thursday, which was 318.13, got to 318.56, gave it up. That says now it's going to try to get down to the lower end of this, which is the 308 area. Uh, we go take a look at Tesla, Tesla public relations-wise. Uh, out here today, had a little problem. Uh, that was down, that's down seven dollars. Uh, that is coming into its lower swing point where it has some volume. Tesla wants to retest at least the 303. In Tesla's case, I believe, what? Let's see. Uh, yeah, Tesla declines as driver claims car crashed using autopilot. So bottom line is that. Uh, <laughs> We'll see. Uh, I suspect uh, they get computers inside those things to figure out uh, exactly what happened, when it happened, and if, in fact, it happened as the driver is stating. Uh, some of the higher volume stocks out here today. Uh, you got Freeport McMoran up 36 cents. NVIDIA's down 62. You get Microsoft up 43. Whole Foods is down 23. Um, yeah, Blue Apron, Blue Apron. Uh, this is an IPO that uh, came out, and uh, bottom line, uh, there we go. So they got this out right on time, folks. Okay, they had to reduce the uh, IPO price when they, when they brought it out uh, by a substantial amount. They brought it out, brought it public. This is only like a couple weeks ago. Brought it public, uh, at ten dollars right now. You're trading six sixty. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow is down 7, NASDAQ, and s and are flat. Right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Trading is different than investing, but the opportunity to take advantage of short-term trends is only one if you get the direction right. Direction leveraged and inverse ETFs offer bold trades on U.S. and international stocks and bonds. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Dow Industrials right now at our nine. You get the NASDAQ down two. S&P's a flat. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Steve's got a great program right here, TFNN, folks. Every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, folks, all the program at TFNN, get it right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV on the right-hand side. As you're over to our website at TFNN, you can test drive Steve's newsletter, Mastering Probability. The way you do that, you go to TFNN, go to newsletters, go to trading newsletters. You can test drive Steve's newsletter 30 days absolutely free. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, everyone is on vacation. Wow. it's This is pretty intense. There's no <laughs> doubt. It's it's pretty amazing, man. I thought you know, like last week was you know anemic volume. If this spy volume stays in place, it's going to be crazy, man. It's well, going to be I, like, I, I don't know, 25 no, no. million. Well, I had yeah, I hadn't noticed it until you said it. So I had just a few minutes to export uh, my data for the spy, and yeah. all the volume data, and uh, since uh, since the bottom in 2009, the lowest volume day, taking today out of the equation, was May 30th. This was 2017, which had 35 million. July 10th, just a few days ago, was 36 million shares. And then we wow. we have a Chris, we have a Christmas time period on the 23rd. That really doesn't count. A 37 million, a Thanksgiving of 37 million twice between 2015 2016. A July 4th of 39. So I have a few of those uh, days marked with green arrows yes, on I my see charts. That. Out. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, large, weakest volume day, lightest volume day, in a long, long time. And I just I decided to start just really to start with the uh, March 2009 bottom. You know, if I take it back to the let's say the bottom in 2002, sure. um, it takes it takes a while to get back to 18 million shares in the spy. So, yeah, pretty incredible. It really is, man. So, so what do you last, see happening out here? Well, you know, last time that we were together uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, I spoke about how. Uh, when a bear market gets going to the downside, it, it really doesn't let you out. This is when it just totally rings the bell, and it really doesn't give you that second chance. And I gave several examples. Uh, one, for example, was the top in 1929. When the Dow finally made that high, it just simply fell off and kept going to the uh, downside. Uh, the same thing when we took a look at the Dow making a, a top in 1946. 1966 as well. So everybody watching us on Tiger TV inside the den gets to see these charts out here. And you can go back to every major 
market top out there. And because the Dow had been testing and retesting its highs, it was suggesting to me that a major bear market had not started. And as you uh, pointed out uh, uh, earlier in the show on Friday, the Dow went on to make a new all-time high. If we close today at a uh, just up a, a tick, uh, it's going to be another new closing high out here. So this is this is typical action, not associated with a with a major top, but this is 2017. So this is a year, Tom, that is ending in a seven, and that always does beg that question. You know, is there is there a bear market that's near? So uh, certainly volume wise, you, one would think that that's a possibility. And, and folks, what I'm referring to is when I say years ending in seven, that takes you back to 2007, 1987, 1977, 1957, 1937. Each of those years, you will see that that was a, a major move to the uh, downside that began. It's not always the same time period. But then that begs to the question, well, what about 1927 or 47 or 67 or 87? So the reality is if we take a look at years ending in seven, and I go back and take a look at the last 90 years, it's basically a coin toss. It's, it's five out of nine, this being year number 10. So we might flip the coin, and this year we'll say, no, it's not. And so what I'd like to do is just simply improve our odds, get better than a coin cost with regard to whether or not the market is going to go ahead and form some type yeah you know are we entering into bear market territory and so what i've learned here tom is that uh, there is a pattern that is present at the beginning of every bear market and that's what i refer to as the price relative strength divergent pattern now this is a tool that uh, i've created on my own. It, I took some of the work from J. Wells Wilder, but I, I simply uh, found a technique that works better than what he taught in his books out there. And then I programmed it automatically creates these lines on my charts out here. And the last time that we had a bear market, meaning a decline of 20% or more, was actually in the S&P 500. Typically gets overlooked. This was in May of 2011 when we saw from top to bottom we saw a 22% decline. And on this chart here, this shows how price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, moving yes. lower, less weakness. And the key to both of these patterns is the way that the market talks, walks, and squawks, which is creates these wonderful Japanese candlestick signals. So as an example, here's the 1927 uh, Dow. And uh, there was no bear market that was present. There was no price. And we have to really look. This 1927 is almost a third into the page out here. And there was no bear market present in 27. 37, absolutely. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. We had a bearish reversal signal. In fact, even the bottom that formed in 1938 was the same pattern, much like we just looked at from 2011. 1947, no bear market. There was no price relative strength divergent pattern. 1957, Absolutely a bear market. We saw price moving higher, doing less relative energy. This is our weekly charts, by the way, that we're taking a look at. Uh, bearish reversal signal, same type of bottom formed in uh, 58. 67, no bear market. How do we know that? Well, first, there was not one of these price relative strength, <coughs> excuse me, divergent pattern. 77, there it was. There's your signal. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Bearish reversal signal. 87, all right? We talk about the 87 crash. Could one have seen it coming? If, if folks knew what we know now about all of the other prior bear markets, or at least when a decline begins, this gave us plenty of information well before the actual crash in October 1997. No bear market. No price relative strength divergent pattern. 2007, absolutely. Just like there was in 2009 at the bottom, the opposite pattern. So that begs the question, where are we now? And what you and I can see is that price is moving higher and it is doing it with less energy. So it's really important in this month of July or the month of August to be watching to see if on a monthly or on a weekly basis if there is a bearish reversal signal that forms. Because if it does, then this is a year ending in seven where the hair on the back of our neck ought to stand up. Now I'm absolutely still bullish because what I know about this pattern is that it doesn't matter until a bearish reversal signal forms. So this is only like a weatherman in Florida 
telling you and I that it might rain today. We know that that is something that occurs nearly every day that we're right here now. in Florida. That's right. right? That's yeah. right. So, so this is just forecasting potential rain. Uh, you know, have your umbrella handy. But otherwise, just as you and I talked about a couple weeks ago, the markets are going to or should continue to rise. And we'll know soon enough whether or not this is one of those years in seven that you and I have to actually take our umbrellas out and then start looking to the short side of the trade. So that's what I'm seeing as we speak right now. And, and did uh, you see, like, in the den with Mike just put, today, today folks, it's July 7th. It's 7 <laughs> 17, 17 today. How's that? Uh, well, love if, it, man. if it is, if it is, then the market's not going to let us out beginning tomorrow. It'll just it's gonna keep be pretty possible. wild, man. Listen, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to trading newsletters. You can test drive Mastering Probability right now, 30 days. Thanks so Thanks, much, Tom. Steve. Have a great one. Have a safe one. You too. Bye-bye. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is down nine. You get the NASDAQ off one. S&Ps are off uh, they're flat. Um, if we go over and we take a look at uh, Bitcoin, folks, Bitcoin took quite a ride out here today and has been taking quite a ride. So Bitcoin uh, is trading at uh, 2123. It's 2123. The high that was generated it was out there on the 12th of June. That was 2999. Um, 0.95, uh, Today, Bitcoin get down to uh, 18.52. Bottom line, you know, it looks to me like, you know, we don't have volume characteristics on this, but the way this is breaking down, 
There's no reason this can't go right back to 1287. That's where it had a consolidation. That's where it broke top side from. And if you do want to see something that's pretty wild, this is that is absolutely the wild west out there. So since Bitcoin came out, uh, blockchain technology, uh, there's been a slew of other sites that are naming basically digitally coins different things. Uh, out here today, CoinDash. CoinDash says hacker stole 7 million at initial coin offering. Uh, so watch how this shakes out. Uh, does this support the notion that there's a bubble in digital currencies and initial coin offerings? CoinDash, a blockchain technology startup that builds itself as a social trading platform, said that his website was hacked today and 7 million was stolen from investors trying to participate in the company's initial coin offering. Uh, so check this out. This is pretty wild. Uh, the investors aren't going to lose money. I, that's the end of the story. But let me let me walk you through this. Investors had been instructed to pay with Earthium, which is another digital coin, and send funds to the token sales smart contact address. In an email, CoinDesk said it appeared that the sending address was hacked and changed to a fraudulent address. That seems so easy. The company doesn't know who is responsible for the attack, which is still ongoing. According to a statement on the website, CoinDash has terminated the coin sale and asked investors to stop sending Erythium to the site. A rapid surge in token prices, doubling on average since they started trading, has convinced investors to hand over millions in, to early stage development and fundraising rounds that often close in minutes. The hype has driven prices uh, of coins for Erythium, the network of which many of the projects are built, to around 300 from $8 at the beginning of this year. Eartha traded at about $174 on Monday, according to CoinMarketCap. Uh, this, was damage, this was a damaging event and to both our contributors and our company, but surely not the end of our project, CoinDash said in a statement. CoinDash is responsible is responsible to all of its contributors and will send coins reflective of each contribution. Um, both investors who sent Erythium to the fraudulent address and the correct one received the intended coin dash tokens, the company said. So bottom line, uh, you can see, <laughs> if you hadn't heard folks um, about the rest of these companies that are doing uh, these fundraising uh it is phenomenal. If you Google it, it's actually hard to comprehend. You know, most of us have just heard about uh, Bitcoin and Arethium, uh But bottom line is that there right now, there's been, I know I read about at least seven other companies that have different spins on how they're doing it. And yet you're talking about raising a couple companies, 10, 15, 20 million dollars in the matter of a couple hours. That's how wild that whole uh, deal is happening. So some of the higher vault, well, actually, let's go look at Big Blue, because Big Blue is the leader in the Dow today on the way down. They're coming out with their numbers tomorrow at four o'clock. Um, Big Blue right now, it looks like to me that someone knows what's going to be inside Big Blue, because for, for a day that is very well could be the lightest volume day we have. Big Blue has an expansion of volume, down a buck sixty. Its swing low is one forty nine seventy nine. You're at one fifty two fifty four. We bring this back a bit, and this looks like, yeah, this wants to get. Yeah, this could get down. This is pretty intense. This you're talking one forty two. Then you're talking 132. Let me bring this back further. Yeah, this this top of 215 looks to me like it was the top. That's 2013. You know, you got down to uh, 116. And right now, that wants to test 136. 136 is the high of that low. That's where that baby looks like it's uh, going to make its way into. Uh, we take a look at some of the higher volume stocks in this low volume market out here today. The leader is Advanced Micro. That that almost every day that's the leader. That's down six cents. Bank of America is down twenty. Now Bank of America is coming out with numbers tomorrow morning. You get Rite Aid uh, down two cents. Apple is up eighty. Ford is up five. Micron Technologies up five. You get Microsoft up fifty one. Uh, Sprint is down fourteen. Uh, Hertz is up forty four cents. 
U.S. Steel is up 16 cents. Let's go take a look at the steel market because, let's see. U.S. Steel. Okay, so U.S. Steel... This baby is down from a high of 41 bucks. Got cut in half. 23. Yeah, it looks like I can build some cars here. Let's see when they're coming out with numbers. Because, let's see, they're coming out with numbers the 25th. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see uh, if, in fact, they're going to put some uh, regulations in, price, in, in place, rather, so that... Uh, Chinese um, bringing as much steel into the country. That's what the U.S. steel companies are trying to do at this particular point, folks. Uh, they have a, a couple uh, anti-dumping complaints in. We go into the XLF. Actually, let's go into Bank of America. So Bank of America tomorrow morning, that is coming out with numbers. That's going to come out with numbers at quarter to seven Eastern Standard Time. And uh, Bank of America... Last high was out here on July 6th, and this looks like this is going to. What's interesting about this, this is going to be the second get go on banks. Banks came out on uh, Friday, came out with numbers. Numbers weren't that great, weren't bad either. But bottom line, they didn't catch a bid. Uh, this looks like Bank of America looks like it wants to run down to the uh, price point of twenty-two dollars and forty-five cents. And if I broke that consolidation, then you'd see it down at nineteen. So. Uh, bottom line is that uh, inside, let's see, well, let me see if Wells Fargo is coming out. So inside that banking structure, I expect you're going to see, um, no, Wells Fargo already came out. You're going to see more weakness. That's the way that that is setting up right now. Uh, the uh, Amazon, uh, we take a look at Amazon. So Amazon, folks, what they did out here today is that they patented uh a meal kit, or they trademarked a meal kit. So Blue Apron uh, dropped 12%. Now, Blue Apron just went public last week, uh, and it dropped 12% as Amazon.com filed a trade patent application for prepared food kits, the latest sign that investors are concerned about newly public Blue Apron. Uh, shares of the meal kit delivery company sank to 651 Thirty-five percent drop from its initial public offering. It's pretty intense. I mean, that's that's about as heavy as you get. You just go public. What's supposed to happen, too, by the way, folks, is that the broker dealers are supposed to basically get that at a fair price, meaning out to the public. There's no way you you, you drop that quick. See ya. Don't want to be ya. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Dow's down one. Nasdaq's up two. S and P's a flat. Right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2000, 
2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. The Dow Industrials is a finish down nine. You had the NASDAQ uh, up one. Uh, S&P is a flat. And uh, bottom line is that uh, if we go take a look at that spy as we're coming into uh, the close, we get approximately uh, 20 minutes coming into this close and we are there it is it's still your 21 million i started the program with 18 million yeah you're gonna they might throw 9 million at the close but bottom line it's, it's going to be shot volume out here as you come over to our website at tfnn folks what you are going to see right on the front page in the carousel our man mr dave white he is going to be premiering a new online course for his subscribers. Now, the name of it, you're going to see it. The next wild, wild west of computing. What this is going to be all about, folks, which is really neat. We were talking about this this morning, is the aspect of what is the next wild west of computing. Well, bottom line, it's machine learning, folks. Uh, if you are a subscriber of the Path of Least Resistance or the Tech Insider or the Out of Time in the Trade Charts, you'll be in this online course free uh bottom line you want to test drive any of those um the, the either the two newsletters dave has or the out of time and the trade charts you can test drive the out of the time and trade charts 30 days absolutely free money back guarantee you can come into this uh this is really going to be pretty cool folks because what has happened uh no doubt uh, is that this machine learning deal uh is taking on basically um a whole view of its own uh and you know, when, when you look back uh, in computers, basically about 40 years, yeah, about 36 years, uh, we've had two or three real accelerations as to what computers can do, meaning helping us, okay? Uh, and, you know, we'll see uh, how this shakes out, but it's going to be a great workshop. Uh, and it's, well, it's going to be intriguing, I think. And when I was interviewing Dave on Friday, he was talking about that there are software programs out there that would allow... Uh, of course, Dave's a programmer that allow other people, you and I, to turn around and take advantage of what machine learning actually is. So uh, check it out. You want to be ahead of the curve, folks. Just come over to TFNN, test drive one of Dave's newsletters or out of the time in the trade, time in the trade charts. You can be in that new uh, online course uh, on the 26th. So it's July 26th. We're going to take a look at the uh, IWM out here, folks, and what you're going to see is that the small caps, uh, they did 12 million shares. They're going Now, this is where this gets interesting, so check this out. We have the SPY with maybe one of the lightest days of the year. The IWM, small caps, it's light, but not as light as like the SPY is. So let's go look at the diamonds inside the Dow Industrials. We take a look at the diamonds. The diamonds have volume. So this is wild, man. This is weird. Okay, so, yeah, the, the diamonds 
a 2.1 million. That they normally do two or three million. The Qs, it looks like it's the Qs and the um, the Qs get 20 million going into 34. And if the Qs don't close over 120, 142.29, you get a failure. And right now we're underneath that. And you know, what we had, what we have had happen is this: we have not had on on June sixth. What you had is that you had the Nasdaq and the NDX one hundred go fast and furious down. You know, the diamonds, the the diamonds and the spy really didn't follow it. So it's going to be intriguing out here today because of the fact that the spy has such light volume. Uh, is something going to come out in the earnings tonight, tomorrow? Uh, that will affect it. That will actually uh, get some selling on the way down. We'll find out. Let's go over to that gold contract. So gold caught a bid, got a good bid last week, caught a bid out here today. Uh, we have gold trading at 12.33. You're going to close over the highs of Friday. You're doing 162,000 contracts. Not bad. It looks to me like the next stop for gold, folks, is 1260. 1260 consolidated there a bit. It'll, it'll get some flack as it gets up to that level. Uh, we'll see what kind of cause we build after we get to that price point. We go into the XAU. We look at the XAU. The XAU out here also caught a bid today. That's up a buck 26. Uh, we're at 8206. Now the XAU bro had broken its downtrend last uh, Tuesday. Wednesday, yeah, last Tuesday. Uh, XAU looks like it wants to make a run to 87.39. Gold Bugs Index also wants to make a run. Uh, that Gold Bugs Index uh, right now is up 238. You're at 188. That looks like it wants to make a run to the uh, 204 area. Uh, where the divergence is, um, no doubt. Let's go over to the dollar for a second. Uh, so the way that the dollar has got plastered, uh, you would expect that the gold contract as well as the equities uh, would go a lot higher. Um, they haven't. You know, will that change? I suspect it's going to change one of these days. Um, the dollar, you know, we'll get another another low. It's got another closing low. The dollar broke downtown last week, did it with volume. You're at 94.89. And uh, the, the level of, yes, she is right there. The level of... Um, 92 to 91 is game right now, and that's pretty intense. Uh, it, well, it's pretty intense that the broad market, it doesn't seem to affect the broad market. It also has not really affected, well, it, it, we had a pullback inside the metal market, of course, when the first time that the, um, the rates were going up by the Fed. Bottom line, this this whole dollar deal is uh, really intriguing because it's like, what does it mean? What does it mean that it's going down? Um, let's go take a look at uh, platinum for a couple of the tigers out here. PPLT. So we have this trading up. This is the ETF for physical platinum shares. It's trading $88.56. Oh, this is nice. You get some juice behind it, too. Yeah, you're coming in here with juice. This is making us move up to 92.55. And let me see if I can actually bring the contract up. Yo. Let's see. Where are you? Well, I... 927. P. One second. Sorry about that, folks. P. L. Well, I'll have to get that at the break. Um, silver, we get over to the. Actually, I wanted to look at Pan American silver. So. We have some divergence uh, inside the silver market. What we have is this. Silver is weaker than gold. It got croaked last week, came back. Today was the first day that it went inside the larger range. And this is right what we needed with Pan American Silver because this is, this is normally a pretty strong stock, folks. Uh, but what it did do last week is it got down to 1508. 
and it needed to do exactly what it did today. It had to get back inside this uh, higher range, which it did. So that's 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 a decent indication that we are going to continue higher. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials down 10. Nasdaq S&P is a flat. Gold is up 650. Silver is up uh, 17 cents. We're going to be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And uh, at 4.05, Netflix is going to be uh, one of the high flyers coming over with numbers today, folks. If we go over to BlackRock, BlackRock came, came out with numbers this, this morning. And, you know, BlackRock is the sponsor of... Uh, they bought iShares, okay? So they are one of the biggest um, ETF providers out there. Uh, bottom line is that the, the estimate was uh, earnings per share estimates five dollars and thirty-eight cents. They come in below that. They come in at five twenty-three. Uh, their gross estimate was two point nine nine billion. They come in at two point nine seven billion. Uh, their net inflow was 93.5 billion versus 80.3 billion a quarter ago. So the inflow, it's pretty amazing. Imagine that inflow, folks. That's crazy. Now, if we go and we take a look at uh, BlackRock, what you are going to see, and this is wicked dangerous, this, uh, this came off the high with volume. So uh, this had made a high on Friday, $442.83. You come off that. Monster volume. We're trading 424 right now, and if we bring this back, 
We broke out of a consolidation. 382 is game right now. Uh, it had broken out that, out that 382 in December, and it looks like it's going to make its way back inside that area. So we'll see what ends up happening as it comes back inside that area. Uh, what, what you can see, now BlackRock, certainly, they're in the finance business. Um, ETFs, everyone's trading ETFs, everyone's putting ETFs in their portfolios. What does happen, however, is that the spread, the narrow spread on the ETF structure for these companies, they you have to bring in big, big dollars because the spread is so dramatically small on what they're making when they make and create shares. Make Well, they make shares, and then they destroy shares on a continual basis. That's what the ETF market does, and they do, does do it on a continual basis. You know the thing that's amazing out here? One of the Tigers was saying, Duffy, uh, was saying that uh, the machines on strike today, too. Do they know that it's the summer? That And that's... I. That's something to wrap your head around, you know, because the reality is that they shouldn't be on strike. <laughs> Machines don't go on strike. Uh, but something's happening because, you know, it's like in, in one way, say, OK, do the machines bring the volatility into the market? There's arguments about that. Um, there's, you know, that argument, I think I don't agree with that argument. Um, they definitely are more efficient than you and I when we're basically hitting our, our mouse. There's no two ways about that. And I suspect they're, they know a lot more than we know. But that, that right there is really intriguing, man, because the, the market, you know, I guess the spread is so dramatically slow today that, you know, it's hard making money when you're the S&P itself. Well, let's look at what the S&P itself did. And this is where... So we had the... High today of 2460, and the low of 2454. Yeah, we, we had we had six points. You know, so that's that's still enough to make money. It's not 10. 10, 10 points in day trading, in the S and P works, folks. You know, you, you start getting less than that. It is pretty tough. Because what ends up happening is that let's say you're wrong a couple points on each side. If you get six, then you're only, you only get two points to, to basically move around. You get 10, you're wrong on two points on each side, then you get six. And, and six at, you know, each contract, a mini contract is 50 bucks. Uh, this is some money to be made at that particular place. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with uh, Netflix uh, after the close. And, of course, uh, we'll see where that uh, shakes and bakes the NASDAQ. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. Dow Industrials right now, flat. The NASDAQ uh, is up one. S&Ps are also flat. We'll be right back, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN. Ten. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Nick in Tampa. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Tom O'Brien, it is an absolute pleasure. 
Thanks so much, man. We appreciate you calling. No problem. Um, dude, I've been listening to your show for about two years now, and it has just been wonderful. I listen to you, Basil, Andy. You guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day, and great week. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials down eight, NASDAQ up one, S&P's up two, gold contract up five dollars and sixty cents, trading at twelve thirty-three an ounce. Silver up sixteen cents, sixteen dollars and nine cents an ounce. Platinum up four dollars and ninety cents, trading out at nine twenty-six an ounce. You have copper up three and a half pennies at two seventy-two a pound. Light sweet crude down fifty-five cents, forty-six dollars twenty cents a barrel. Notes. Ten-year note up one tick, 125.22. Thirty-year bond up two ticks, 152.22. King dollar down 40 ticks, finished at another new low, 94.890. King dollar, folks, is making its way down into the 92 to 91 area, and if we break that area, you're going to be at 88, and that is quite a move. Uh, we've gone from 103. Though we started on election night at 96. Went up to 103 by January 3rd, straight down since January 3rd. Euro, the euro is trading at 114.83, almost 115 to the U.S. dollar. The yen is at 112.5 to the U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You have the lightest volume day that I've found in a long time, folks, in the SPY. You've done 27 million shares. You're going into Friday that had 60 million. You actually took out the high on Friday that 100, 132 million. So pretty anemic. Dow Industrials. What do we have with the Dow? Dow Industrials, same type of setup. And what you can't expect, no doubt, Mondays and Fridays in the summer, it's going to be slow. Uh, this Friday, however, you have option expiration. So I, I expect. You're going to have volume and option expiration. We have earnings all week. We have bank numbers tomorrow morning. Uh, Netflix just come out. I'll give you Netflix. And um, uh, we also had uh, SCSS. This is a, I Select Comfort. I believe it's a match, mattress make. Yeah, Select Comfort. Uh, so uh, inside the Dow Industrials, same type of setup in the Dow Industrials. Dow Industrials, flat market out here. And then NASDAQ composite, also flat market. And what we will have uh, right now is that when we take when we when we take a look at this, whoa, what would I just do there? One second, sorry about that. There we go. When we take a look at the composite, uh, composite got to a price point today of 63.30. You're at 63.14. The QQQs, they closed out at a price point of 142.19. Right now, they're trading at 142.40. And what that's about, let me go look at this 142.40 first. So the number they had to close over is 142.29. So it's going to be intriguing is this. They got over it. They closed under it, which is a failure. That being said, now let's go over to Netflix and we go take a look at Netflix. What you have, what you have with Netflix is this. Netflix right now is trading at a price point of it closed at 161.70. That is trading at 174. And if you were with us on the uh, first hour, folks. Uh, Bottom line, on the, if you are with us on the first hour, uh, what Netflix was doing, it was pushing into its swing point, and it did have volume as it was pushing in. Right now, you're at 13500000 500. It had about $10 million as it was pushing into uh, a $10.2 million day. So Netflix closed at 161.70. You're trading up at a 174 right now. 
that's going to be another all-time high. And here, how, and this is where the numbers are in Netflix. So Netflix, there she is. It's a big number, too. Where are you? Okay, so come on, let me. There it is. So total net streaming ads. So check this out. This is how much they added just in 90 days. The estimate was that they were going to add 3.99 million. They added 4.4 million accounts in 90 days, folks. Their revenue, the estimate was 2.76 billion. They took in 2.78 billion. It's what's intriguing here is that what they're saying is that they did they they evidently uh, planned on on taking in even more uh, because it's saying that they missed profit estimates. Uh, but bottom line is that that is pretty intense uh, what they took in period. We go take a look at the gold contract out here. Gold contract caught a bid uh, out here today. Gold contract trading up seven bucks. That little baby is all about the U.S. dollar. And, you know, what we haven't had yet is that we haven't had a real explosion on price inside the gold market. Uh, we're up by five, $5.70. Uh, you, you have a, uh, we're at 12.33. I expect 12.60 uh, is going to be the number that uh, we'll see whether. It slows down at that 1260 level, or we build some more cars in order to get to higher price. The we go over and we take a look at that dollar for a second. What you're going to see uh, is just pure destruction. The thing that's amazing about this dollar is that, like, what is coming down the pike that our dollar uh, bottom line is getting so weak. And you know, we haven't ha we haven't heard this, you know, basically pushing in the media, pushing on the, in the newspapers, financial newspapers at all. Um, and so the reason I'm saying I'm bringing that up, that means it can go a lot lower because most times when everyone starts talking about that we have such a weak dollar again, that's when you, you start seeing a turnaround. Uh, thus far, this, this baby, um, there's just no buyers. We had 94.89. Uh, it broke with conviction last week. We went from 95 960, so to 94870, uh, that's setting up that that can get down to 92, uh, 91 pretty quickly. And I suspect that the way that uh, everything is trading right now, it looks like it's going to actually do that. Uh, what we did do uh, tomorrow morning, let's let's go look at uh, Bank of America tomorrow morning. So Bank of America uh, tomorrow morning is going to be coming out with numbers. Bank of America closed uh, at 2402. And that doesn't look like it's going to catch a bid also. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow Industrials finished down eight. NASDAQ up one and a half. S&Ps are up two. Netflix about numbers trading up about 10 bucks. We're going to be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n-a-d-e-x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Trading is different than investing. But the opportunity to take advantage of short-term trends is only one if you get the direction right. Direction leveraged and inverse ETFs offer bold trades on U.S. and international stocks and bonds. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over to the three Qs. So the uh, Netflix is moving the Qs. Uh, Qs are trading right now. They closed at 142.19. They're trading at 142.53. And if we take a look at network Netflix, what you're going to see is right now we are at 175. So it's up uh, 15 dollars 14 dollars and that's uh with some conviction now, now it, it always gets intriguing you know before you before we're coming out with numbers looking at charts saying okay what what is the equity doing in netflix's case it's like okay you were pushing in with volume and bottom line is it it took off top side took off with that volume and uh let's see live top live So what I'm looking for is that uh, what does happen, Netflix, here it is, let's see. So according to Netflix, uh, global net ads totaled, uh, it was a second, in the second quarter, it was a record 5.2 million uh, versus 3.2 million. It increased 5% sequentially, bucking the historical seasonal patterns. So that that's that's pretty good i mean that that's that is that no doubt is a uh big number uh, netflix domestic business isn't slowing down in fact uh it was the company's most yes it was the most second quarter additions in the united states since 2011. After having Gail said that, Netflix is learning to be cautious. It seems to be toning down its forward guidance. Bottom line, folks, is that uh, you, get a, you get an equity that uh, is taken off top side in a big way, which will um, affect tonight, at least, the uh, NDX 100 and the three Qs. Because you can see the Qs, um, they're trading up about uh, 40 cents. Yeah, they're trading up 40 cents right now from the close. We go take a look at the, some of the uh, banking stocks out here, the XLF. Now, it's so intriguing, no doubt, is that, you know, you have the Fed saying they're going up on rates. Bottom line, banks come out with numbers. Numbers aren't great, aren't bad. XLF can't make it over its high. The high that we're talking about here in the XLF is 25.29. If we actually go look at the Fed fund futures rate, 
uh, the first time that it gets over 50%, folks. So the Fed fund futures rate, traders trade these rates as to the probability structure of when the short-term interest rates are going up. Right now, here's how it's run down. There's a 10%. So the next meeting is July 26th. There's a 0% chance of the Fed going up 25 basis points. September 20th, you have a 10.1% chance. November 1st, a 10.8% chance. December 13th, a 42.3% chance. March, no, January 31st, 428 March 21st, that's the first one, 61.3. That's all the way out to March. So that's pretty intense. Um, you know, we'll we'll see where it, where it does shake out. Right now, you have the ten year trading at two point one three uh, in the United States, and bottom line, that's still a high interest rate when you take into consideration where the rest of these countries are. Canada is at one point eight nine. You have the United Kingdom at one point two. These are ten year rates. France is at eight tenths of one percent. Germany's at five tenths of one percent. Uh, if we go up to Canada and we take a look at the uh, Canadian dollar. Let's see what we got here. So the Canadian dollar has shown strength. Uh, yeah, even more strength. Uh, Canadian dollar is 126. So 126 Canadian dollars to one U.S. dollar. This only three months ago, folks, was 137 Canadian dollars to one U.S. dollar. So, uh, Bob, I mean, no, just the opposite, rather. Uh, now it's yeah 126 Canadian dollar to U.S. dollar. That's right. Uh, bottom line, uh, it was at 137 Canadian dollar to the U.S. dollar. So you can see the type of strength that it's, that it's actually got. Pretty decent strength uh, in how our U.S. dollar is breaking down. We go take a look at the euro, uh, and with the, the the euro looks like it's going to make another leg up, folks. The, the euro right now is at 114. Uh, this was trading at 105. Three months ago, you bring this back a little. It looks like 116 is game here. So, uh, you know the correlation when I, I talk about the 92 to 91 area inside the dollar index. Well, the correlation to that is 116. Actually, it's closer than that. Look at this. This is going to be intriguing. Oh, this is dangerous for the U.S. dollar. So check this out. We are actually right at it right now to break the 115 level. And if, if in fact, the euro does that, you are going to see this euro charge up to 120 in about a heartbeat. Because what had happened is that the euro came down so fast in May of 2014. That's when we went from 139 down to 104. So that's pretty intense. You know, these currency moves um, make a difference. There's no two ways about that. Uh, what does happen is this. Now, check this out. This is pretty wild. As the market has been going higher, if you were a foreign investor and you turned around and you're buying U.S. stocks, you have not gone higher. You have actually gone lower. This is what, This is where the twist comes in with the aspect of, currency conversion because when you bring this up and we put it into the euro you're going to see that the bottom line is that the high in the dow industrials uh was the second of march uh it's been going down since then even though of course when you put it into u.s dollars we're at highs and you know bottom line uh currency conversion is is a monster uh, SCC, let's go take a look at uh, that mattress maker. Let's see what they're doing. Okay, so this is a Select Comfort. They design, manufacture, ear bed mattresses, adjustable, uh, all of the above. The low is 17. Uh, the high is 36. And this is trading right now. 
It's trading down a buck, trading down a buck and a half. Now, that was up two bucks, trading down a buck. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, so uh, Select Comfort reported net sales for the second quarter that missed the lowest analyst estimate. Net sales was were 284.7 million. The estimate was 300 million. Uh, second quarter lost two cents versus uh, uh, earnings per share gain of five cents. Compatible stores were minus four uh, percent. That's it's pretty intense, actually. It's pretty intense uh, in this. You know, this type of environment, if you can't make money selling mattresses when the real estate uh, business in general has been going topside. You stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow Industrials down eight. NASDAQ up one and a half. Speeds up two. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at uh, some of the higher volume stocks. And this was a big low time volume market out here today, folks. We had Bank of America down 19 cents. Now, Bank of America comes out with numbers at quarter seven tomorrow morning, Eastern Standard Time. You had Advanced Micro down uh, 12 cents. Ford was up six. You had NVIDIA, which has been on a fire, uh, down 70 cents. Micron Tech off seven. Uh, some of the high flyers out here. Let's go to Facebook and take a look at Facebook. Uh, Facebook is trading 159. That is at all time highs. Facebook is going to be coming out with their numbers on the 26th. Uh, we go over to Google. We take a look at Google. 
Uh, Google uh, out here today traded down 257. They come out with their numbers on the 24th. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft, I believe, is coming out, uh, let's see, is that Thursday? Uh, yes, Microsoft is coming out Thursday. They closed at $73.35. That, they come out with numbers Thursday, and that's, that's right now, I believe that's at an all-time high, 73.35. There it is. Um, so that's going to be a really close one to, close one to watch. Uh, now, the king of the hill, good old Amazon, who's just eating companies alive. Uh, Amazon closed at 1,010. 10. The high is 1,017. Amazon comes out with their numbers on the 27th. And what you did hap happen with Amazon uh, today is that you had Blue Apron uh, basically go south in a huge way because Amazon filed for a meal kit trademark. Now, uh, STMP would also happen. Our man Dave White turned me on to, um, there was a, a blog out there that uh, stamps.com got hit, folks. That was down $5.95, $5.95. Had volume behind the move, did 1.1 million shares. You're coming into a lower swing point uh, of 140, that's going to get hit. That only hit 356,000 shares. And what this is all about is that. So here it is. Stamps.com fell 4.4 percent, uh, the most intraday since July 3rd, after Capital Forum earlier reported Stamps.com shipping options were removed from Amazon buying services effective July. 15th, citing numerous posts on Amazon seller forum. Posts say equivalent United States post of stamp shipping op op options will be available for domestic shipments at commercial plus prices with no transaction fee. After Amazon eliminated the fee, individuals on the Amazon seller forum indicated that they were considering canceling their stamps.com accounts, which could impact the monthly fee revenue. That's pretty intense. Uh, bottom line is that... Uh, Each and every deal that uh, Amazon seems to make, uh, if you are on the other side of that deal, you are in big trouble. Um, you know, the the latest casualty is Blue Apron. Now, Blue, Ap Blue Apron itself, realistically, I suspect shouldn't have even went public. Um, if we take a look at Blue Apron, what you're going to see is, so Blue, Ap what Blue Apron does is this. They provide meal kit delivery services. Through their hold, they send weekly boxes of pre-portioned ingredients with instructions of how to cook meals at home. Uh, this equity, if you want to see something that's just absolutely bizarre. Okay, so the equity went public the 28th of June. They sold 30 million shares. They sold them at $10 a share. Uh, that was down uh, from, they were trying to get a big, uh, basically $17 a share. And they had to rejigger the IPO to get it out quicker because of the fact that Amazon had made a run for Whole Foods. So that in itself hurt it. That being said, what happened is this, is that you, you, have, a, you have an equity that traded $10 the first day, second day went to $11, and it's down at 659 right now. And it looks to me like you're talking about this is going to be something that's going to continue to lower price. Um, it's a company, let me see, they take in big money. Uh, so they took in this year, or they expect to take in in 2017, $1.1 billion. Um, in the United States, uh, in 2016, they took in $795 million. So you can see it's a big business, and Amazon's going after it. Uh, realistically, folks, I suspect what's going to happen is this. Amazon is going to go after each and every industry that has big numbers, number one, has to be in the billions, something that is pretty easy to do and has to get delivered because Amazon is actually in the delivery business. That's that's the business 
that Amazon is in. So they've figured out the logistics in the delivery business. Their servers are figuring out now what we actually want. That Amazon dot, now this is where this is going to get really wild, between Amazon, that the Amazon dot, that's, if you have it in your house, what's happening is that that is recording everything that's happening in your house. They're using machine learning, putting that into an, more computers to figure out what we want before we want it. That's, that is, I suspect, one of their goals. You know, when we talk about machine learning, uh, come over to our website at TFNN. I'm in Mr. Dave White. He's going to be doing a online course on July 26th. If you happen to be a subscriber of his, you'll be in that course for free. If you'd like to test drive a couple newsletters he had or the out of time in the trade charts, you can do that by coming over to our website, test drive it. You're going to be in that course. I think it's going to be a phenomenal course, and it's something that you really want to wrap your head around because uh, I suspect what's going to happen is just like years ago when between word processing and spreadsheets, you know, it used to be that you, you know, you had to be a freaking genius. And then all of a sudden you take a couple computers um, and you know what, you can do just about anything and everything you want to do very quickly. Well, machine learning almost looks like that's how that's going to shake out. If we go over to Tesla, what has happened with Tesla is this. Uh, Tesla got down 8 bucks today. No big deal, 8 bucks. Uh, bottom line, though, uh, is that uh, what that was all about was uh, an incident that the driver says, oh, no, look at this. Oh, this is pretty wild. Okay, so the rumor all day was, folks, that the driver said that autopilot is what made it happen. And now this just come out. Oh, I got to see this because this just come out at 11 past uh, the hour. Tesla chief executive officer Elon Musk posted an email from a driver who says, who now says he didn't have his vehicle's autopilot system engaged during the weekend crash in Minnesota, an accident that contributed to a decline in the stock. Dave Clack had told police um, that the 2016 vehicle left the roadway after he activated Tesla's driver system program. So let's look. Oh, this is wild, man. That, it's not bidding up. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. The Dow finished down eight. NASDAQ up a one and a half. S&P's up three. We're going to right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. 
Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over to Medtronic, MDT. So Medtronic, folks, uh, today, today came down $2.51, and it had monster volume, 9.4 million. So check this out. This is pretty wild uh, looking at this and what they're talking about. So a computer crash that shut down Medtronic's PLC systems for global ordering, fulfillment, and manufacturing uh, for a week last month will crimp quarterly sales at the world's largest medical technology company. So you had a computer crash one for one full week, folks. It's pretty amazing. Medtronic is still analyzing the issue, which was an internal infrastructure problem, Park Hill said in her first wide-ranging interview since joining Medtronic last summer. While the problem has been fixed, the company... And the company's back to normal operations. It continues to fill black back orders, she said. The delays will push some sales into the next quarter. Medtronic is also dealing with the shortage of blood sugar sensors, partly because of the higher than expected demand for the artificial pancreas uh, the company has developed. Medtronic is scheduled to report its results on August 22nd. Uh, we do expect our first quarter revenue growth on a consistent currency basis to be within our guidance of 4 to 5 percent but at the lower end of that range. Uh, first quarter earnings per share should be in the upper end of the per upper end of the company's high single digit range, thanks in part to a tax benefit expected in the quarter, she said. The CFO says she's confident that the company will meet its full fiscal year guidance of four to five percent uh, constant currency revenue growth and nine to ten percent earnings per share growth. Um, let's pull this up now and take a look at this. The bottom line, folks, is that because that was material, they had to come up with it. They, they waited long enough to come up with it, actually, uh, because Medtronic has been up at these highs from the 12th of June. We take a look at this, and, oh, look at this. This is a classic. Uh, you know, this is going, this is, you know, there's different patterns, but this looks like a three drives to the top. You had, you had the first drive, uh, had a decent top, get put in in February, that was 79, you go down, you drove up again to 89, you go down, and we drove up to 89, testing that area. Yeah, so that, that baby looks like it wants lower price. Uh, let's just go over to Netflix uh, quickly and see where she's bidding. Yes, yeah, she's still bidding up. So she's bidding 177 now, and Netflix has a 6.2 one percent shot position now check this out this is pretty cool so i have to go through this for um restoration hardware uh if you want to see something that's pretty intense i mean dave white turned me on to this uh in the last hour uh restoration hardware folks is trading at 68 dollars and 30 cents they have a shot position <laughs> of 69.79%. They have, it's pretty amazing. It's the shares outstanding versus how many are basically shot. It's, 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 a, it's a huge number. Um, now, this, this is a classic. So they are coming out with their numbers on the 7th. So that means that they already, September 7th, that is. Um, 
Let's see. I believe, oh, there it is. Okay. Shares of uh, Restoration Hardware fell in early trading after a surprise analyst last week when it announced, when it announced a completion of a 700 million share repurchase program, buying half the shares of the outstanding year to date. Bank of America views the buyback as imprudent use of the capital, while Guggenheim is somewhat reassured by the company's free cash flow. Um, the decision to fund buybacks primarily through the sale of debt and marketable securities is overaggressive, significantly raises um, risk, the risk profile of this, the equity. Uh, despite near-term earnings risks, sees long-term growth factors in restoration hardware, such as positioning between high-end design and larger national competition. Now, what's wild here is this. So, okay, so this is how they pulled us off. They, let's see what they take in and what they were looking because they, they were having a problem. Their stores are so big, folks, uh, that they're, you know, they should be doing great, but the bottom line is that uh, it's always the expense side of the uh, ledger. And in this particular case, let's see what they have. Okay, so, uh, yeah, they haven't grown. That's the bottom line. And I bet their expenses have grown because the stores are getting bigger. In 2015, they took in $1.9 billion. 2016, $2.1 billion. Guess what? 2017, $2.1 billion. That being said, uh, different mix in here. Uh, the second quarter, uh, yeah, it was 543 million versus 506. Uh, but this uh, this 700 million buyback, they did it through debt. So they went out to the debt market. Uh, bottom line, did it through debt. Sorry about this. Bought back 700 million in shares, and that, no doubt, if you want to see. A shot squeeze because they bought back. So, picture we are in July 17th. They started this at the beginning of the year, and they bought back. They bought back, folks. When I was just reading that article, more than half of the shares that were traded this year. 700 million. So, this was an equity that was at $24. Huge shot position runs up to 68. That's pretty intense. And you know the way this is positioned, it looks to me um, that you're still going to test $71.40. That was the high of last week. That's a, that's a decent high, you know. So that's pretty intense. I don't think I've seen uh, a shot position that high in a major stock for quite a while and more than likely it just has to do with the exactly you know those stores that are so big let's go over to toll brothers toll brothers of course are building uh, luxury homes uh toll brothers the low for the year is 26 dollars the high is 41 you know when you look at the interest rate structure folks bottom line fed fund futures says guess what fed's not going up until next march that is going to basically keep this home uh, building business in business in a big way, too. That being said, if you want to see something for our brothers and sisters up in Canada, this is pretty intense. We're, let me find this article for you. Um, so what had happened in, first happened in Vancouver, meaning the, the prices just would not stop going up. Then it went on to Toronto. And what you had, uh, same type of setup, very fast accelerations in price each and every month. Uh, the authorities in Vancouver, as well as Toronto, uh, what they end up doing is that they end up putting monster taxes um, on the aspect if you weren't uh, living there. And guess what? They got more than they asked for because in Toronto, the prices went down 15% in one month. One month. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And, you know, what's going to happen here when uh, well, Congress is going to recess sometime in uh, August, uh, when they come back, folks, it's all going to be about the debt ceiling. And what happened out here today is kind of intriguing. So let me read you this article. Uh, Treasury Department officials called bond, called bond traders and their advisors uh, last Friday to assure them that the Trump administration isn't considering prioritizing U.S. debt payments if Congress fails to increase the nation's borrowing authority later this year, according to two people familiar with the matter. The calls came after Bloomberg News published a story about worries among traders that Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin may have to employ a secret plan written by the Obama administration to make sure debt payments are made, potentially at the expense of salaries uh, for government employees, payments to contractors, and other obligations. The Congressional Budget Office forecasts that the federal government will hit its debt ceiling sometime in October. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has urged Congress to increase the nation's borrowing authority without brinkmanship, as, it, as in 2011, when the political showdown triggered the first downgrade of U.S. debt ever. That year, Treasury and the Federal Reserve developed a secret contingency plan to privatize payments, prioritize payments, on government securities over other obligations in case Congress didn't act in time. The plan was publicly revealed in January. While some conservative Republicans have pointed to debt payment prioritization as an option for Treasury, perhaps even a preferred one, 
Some, market, some financial market participants may regard it as the equivalent of the first ever default of the national debt. Anxiety, anxiety among traders is gradually increasing as Congress shows no sign of grappling with the issue. Citigroup said prioritizing debt payments would be dangerous. President Bank of America, Jeffries, have mentioned the option in clients' notes, saying it's unlikely. Still, the market for Treasury debt hasn't shown any signs of being unsettled. Investors haven't started shunning short-term government debt, and yields haven't risen. There's no doubt the yields haven't risen. The key here, folks, is the aspect of uh, the debt is going to have to be the level of the debt has to be upped, that the borrowing authority... If it doesn't get up, guess what? You get a bureaucracy. What ends up happening? The bureaucracy slows down. Guess what? You don't know where the ramifications are. The Obama plan is now six years old, and there have been no preparations to use it. The Treasury officials told traders and other bond market participants, um, according to people familiar with the Friday phone calls. The point of the conversations appears to be uh, to emphasize ambiguity in how the debt ceiling debate could unfold this year, they said. When asked why Mnuchin himself was not explicitly saying in public that he wouldn't prioritize debt payments if the ceiling isn't increased, the official said in the calls to take their word for it. There is no current plan to prioritize. So it's pretty wild here. So check this out. Can you imagine that you're trading these vehicles and the, the Treasury on the other side of it says, well, you know, the Treasury Secretary isn't saying anything. The person on the phone says, well, take my word for it. <laughs> you know what, folks? In the finance business, and this is where you're going to see the difference as these things come closer. No one that's been in this business for a period of time and is investing money, and these, these are all professionals in the bond market, are going to take anyone's word, political word, period. Because guess what? They have responsibility to their investors. They have a responsibility to themselves. And bottom line, there always seems to be an excuse when something else happens. You know, we, we've never defaulted, and, and I suspect we're not going to default either. Um, we'll see whether they bring it right up to the cusp of that cliff, cliff once again. Netflix, folks, came out with the numbers, big numbers. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. Have a great night. Have a safe night. Look forward to speaking right back here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Wow! Go get them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.